In a previous video, I showed you how to add two linear demand functions together, and in this video, we're going to add two nonlinear demand functions together. In particular, we're going to look at two Cobb Douglas demand functions, and Cobb Douglas demand functions look like this Q equals 15.6 times the price raised to, and in this case, a negative exponent. The negative exponent here tells us that as price goes up, the quantity will go down. One of the good features about a Cobb-Douglas demand function, an interesting feature, is that this minus 0.563 here, that tells us what the price elasticity of demand is. And sometimes people call these constant elasticity demand functions because the price elasticity of demand is the same everywhere along the curve. And we're going to be using Maxima Portable here. That's the program that you're looking at. In order to graph these, I recommend that you download Maxima Portable and also download the file that we're working with here. If you want Maxima and you're on a PC, the easiest way is to go to portableapps.com and then just search for Maxima. And you'll see it's going to be the first option that comes up here. Maxima Portable. Portable apps are free. There's no viruses, no ad ads, nothing like that. So um, the great thing about portable apps is that you can either run them on your PC or you can run them from a pen drive. You don't actually have to install the program. It just runs as a self-contained unit. Now, if you're on a Mac, you can download Maxima. Uh, I just Googled Maxima for Mac. I found this SourceForge page. I'm assuming that will work for you, but I don't know a lot about Macintoshes. So download Maxima Portable, and you'll have to um, extract it into its own little folder. And then if you want this file that we're working with, go to my website, www.berkeyacademy.com, and click on Files on the left side and then you can download this file right here it's called maxima add cd demands wxm download that open it with maxima and you'll be good to go so let's go ahead and get going here in this first line i'm just defining a function z to be 15.6 p to the minus 0.563 now in maxima to execute a command hold down the control key and then hit enter and that just says okay that's what it is now we're gonna graph it so using a function called WX plot 2d we're gonna make a 2d plot here we're gonna plot the function Z and I'm gonna put the price axis from 0.1 to 30 the y axis from 0.1 to 30 and we're labeling the axes again hold down the control key and hit enter and this gives us an idea what that demand curve looks like. Although, the problem here is price is on the x-axis. We don't like that. As, as economists, we want the price to be on the y-axis. That makes more sense to us. That's what we're used to. So, in doing some experimentation, uh, how can I get price on the y-axis and quantity on the x? Um, I found, for some reason, I had to, instead of calling the price variable p, I had to call the price variable x. Okay, so um, let's redefine this function z and instead call it a. And instead of price, let's call it x. Control, enter. Now here when we plot, I, I chose to do what's called a parametric plot in order to give me some more control to make sure that it was going to plot the way I wanted with price on the y, quantity on the x. Hold down control, hit enter. And now you see, whereas in this version, uh, with price on the x-axis, there was a large gap between the price axis and the demand curve. And now that gap is up on the y-axis. So that tells me that it did indeed switch the axes here. Now, let's define another Cobb-Douglas demand function, 16x to the minus 0.296. Uh, again, this one would have a lower price elasticity of demand, 0.296. Hit, hold down control, hit enter. And let's plot that one. Hold down control and hit enter. And you can tell a little bit by looking at these that this 
new demand function we call a lower demand because it's further to the left than the first one we were working with. Now let's add those two together. C equals C colon. I'm defining a function C, which is just A plus B. Control, enter. And since these exponents are two different, you know, these X's are two different exponents, there's not a way that you can simplify those down. So when you add two Cobb-Douglas demand functions like this, it's just adding them together, and there's not really any simplification that can be done there. Now let's graph all three of these to see what they look like. So we can compare the first one, the second demand, and what does the total demand look like. Control enter. And so here you can see the first demand function, the second demand function in, in red, and the total in purple which is, wait a minute, not what I expected, because when we plotted the second one, B, that kind of looked to me like that was a smaller demand. Let me pause the video and check out what's going on here. Uh -huh, I figured out the culprit. Okay, when we were visually comparing this demand function to this one down here, I, and, and maybe you, also, also failed to see that here the uh, quantity axis is starting at 5. Up here it's starting at 0. So that's what visually misled us into thinking this is a lower demand. And in the back of my mind, I was wondering, you know, since this has a lower elasticity, that means that as price goes up, quantity should be decreasing at a slower rate. So this should be an, a higher uh, demand curve. So in order to fix that, we need to add over here that we want this quantity axis to go all the way to zero or, or very close to zero. Sometimes Maxima doesn't like it if you go all the way to zero because it can't evaluate some functions right at zero. Um, so that's why I usually do 0.1 or 0.01 here. So if I add this little command here, um, draw the x-axis from 0.1 to 30, then this is going to give us a more accurate representation of that uh, demand curve, the 16x to the minus 0.296. It's actually higher than this one. All right, so now when we look at the graph of all of them together, that makes more sense. So the blue is the first demand with an elasticity of 0.563. The red is the one with the elasticity of the 0.296. So as price goes up, quantity is slower to respond. And then when we add the two together, of course, this total demand should be further to the right. Because as we add more people or more demands for the same good together, we should get an increased demand. So that's represented by the purple one here. So I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I encourage you to play around more with Maxima. It has a lot more powerful features than what I've demonstrated here. And I'll be back with some more videos on how you can use Maxima to help you visualize functions and do some mathematical tricks.